Welcome, my friends and associates and peers, etc., etc. This is Rick the Fat Man, and this is your seat at the table. This is Radur, a doomed kingdom. Uh, located in the northeast of Arnor, it was established in Third Age 861 after Arnor's tenth king, Erendor, dies. Uh, the main farmable location is the Angle, an area known uh, between the rivers, the Mithil or the Horwell, and Brunin, the Loudwater. Let's see if we can bring up there, but here we go. And was absorbed in 1401, Third Age, after Hillman Lord seizes power in 1349 and joins Agmar in 1356 in assaulting the Weather Hills and mostly the Cardolan army, which resulted in the Cardolan army being destroyed and the King of Cardolan uh, dying and his son dying. And basically, a few years later, like I said, 1401, the kingdom is absorbed more or less by. Agmar the Witch King. From the very beginning, this was a failed state. This was going to be a... was not going to end well for the Dunedain who lived here and controlled this region of Arnor. Let's take a look at it for a couple, couple different perspectives. One of the first problems was the population of the Dunedain, the Arnorian Dunedain, or the uh, Faithful, uh, never settled in Rador in any significant numbers. As best I can tell, uh, the, the the actual high men, uh, the high Dunedain, uh, were extremely rare, settling-wise. Uh, the leadership maybe, but this would have been a frontier region even at the height of Arnor. This was this was eastern furthest most eastern expansion in one of the most rugged regions of northern Eridor and it was never going to be a large settled populous economically driven section of the country it just would be like settling the badlands or uh, the, the 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 upper hill country uh, the numbers of locations geologically speaking I can think of just in America alone uh, the population of Dunedain that did live here uh, was estimated in the hundreds and most of these were lesser Dunedain. These were Dunedain of mixed mixed blood and quite a few of these people lived further west until well, until the faithful uh, uh, arrived after the fall of Nomer and established the, uh, the countries of Gondor and Arnor. When the Arnor was established, a number of these moved further east because they preferred not to live under the direct control of what you know, the high the high Dunedain who they had a little bit of a disdain for to begin with because they just weren't the same people. The other thing that was going on population wise that, that the the mountainous terrain, the extremely hilly, broken rock, deep vales, deep val valleys and low mountains and hilltops, etc etc, a very rugged region of of this area, uh, is that the populations were uh, of lesser men were quite more concentrated here than anywhere else in uh, in Arnor proper. We had lots of hillmen and Dunlandings who were living in tribes and small villages throughout the region, and then we had a number of uh, of Northrons or uh, northern lesser men coming from the Anduin, uh, Anduin uh, Vales as mercenaries, and then later settling in the region. So the large what population base, base there was, and I suspect if you had to go numbers wise, it probably was in the tens of thousands or, or at best, spread out throughout the region of small villages and small tribal groups. Uh, very few actual s uh, formal settlements. Camith Bryn was one. Uh, there's a ruin of a fortresses up there on the hilltops. There's a there's references by uh, Aragon to the hobbits as they're walking through the first you know, uh, Fellowship of the Ring of uh, you know these former petty countries, these fortif these long ruined fortifications up on these hills, marked the borders of the weather weather hills between Rador and Cardolan and Arthedain, and from the beginning, uh, Radur uh, was aggressive. They felt slighted and or and they, because they were the weaker of the three, uh, were quite keen on controlling certain elements, including uh, most specifically Weathertop or Omensol, where the Plantar was. So they fought a number of petty border wars with uh, Cardolan specifically, but occasionally Arthedain as well for control of these key regions. And every 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 fight diminished their numbers and worked against them. So 
majority of the population uh, the Hillman and the Dunlandings are anti Dunedain in the beginning from the beginning they have ancient hatreds for the Dunedain going way back so they're already a hostile population here for the, the few Dunedain that were here and there was never enough Dunedain in significant numbers high men or lesser Dunedain to have formal military formations so they depended heavily on mercenaries which is where we get a lot of these Northron mercenaries moving into the region and settling uh, the geography. Let's look at the geography again. You know, you just look at the, the 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 image here, and you see how majority of right overlooked. I mean, it was broken. It was rugged. The only viable areas is the angle, and that's the area where the the Brune and the Mithrod or the Loudwater and uh, River Horwell come together. You can kind of see there. As uh, so they, they merge together, that area is considered the angle. It's a, it's a wide river basin uh, valley, which had the most, probably the, the only serious concentration of arable farmland within Radower, and would have seen a significant number of populations living in there. I mean, we're looking at the ge geography of west er, of eastern Arnor, some of the most inhospitable regions, and a sort of a backwater. Just getting around had to be difficult. There were no major roads constructed that, that we know of. The maps don't show very, uh, show any. The minor maps and, and beta cannon material, so they're more like trails or you know, secondary tracks or roads. There's no formal construction, no serious bridge, bridge work of any sort. Uh, like I said, the villages would be small, uh, spread out. Sometimes in some aspects, I think of, the, uh, of some of the uh, uh, Ozarks as an example, where the villages could be fairly close to each other, but be separated from miles of switchback t pathways climbing up and down through the dales and the valleys and the hill hilltops and getting around. So just having any you know regular communication or in a vibrant economy is just going to, to be detrimental here for any serious population. So this already puts Redouer as a competitor state against its sisters of Arthedain and Cardolan at a, at a dire disadvantage. There's no way at any point was Redouer going to succeed and remain a viable country of its own control, especially under control of the Dunedain. And we look at, once again at the population. This is a, another key role as to why Red Ore was doomed to fail. The majority of population, like I said, are Hillmen, Dunlandings, with a bit of Northrons, mostly the descendants from mercenaries that were hired and employed by uh, the Dunedain, the lesser Dunedain of the region. The only significant constructions, and this would have been dated back to the Arnorian settled, the early days of Arnor being settled, or Numerorian construction prior to that would have been the last bridge and the construction of the, of the east-west road, which is often attributed to the dwarven dwarves, though I think there's a combination. I think the dwarves maintained key portions of it, kept it functionable for allowing their commerce between the, the Blue Mountains and points eastward to, to continue. Uh, I always found it interesting that we never, aside from Moria and Gundabad, there's very few references to the, to the dwarves settling anywhere in the Misty Mountains. Mostly, I think, because of the large concentrations of goblins and, and orcs. Although, some argument is that goblins are orcs, and I did a different video on that. I don't agree, but that's just personal opinion. So when we look at this particular map, they see the Weather Hills on the left, and uh, the Midgewater, and the Weather Hills are anchored by Weathertop. So this region to the east of the Weather Hills, including the last the last bridge, and the angle where the, where the Loudwater and the Horwell meet, Troll shawls. This is Radoer. And it's just not conducive to large scale settlement, let alone having a thriving settlement. Then you have to look, then we look at the diversity of the populations. We see uh, very light, very few Dunedain, and the majority of which are lesser Dunedain, or half. You know, these are these are Dunedain bloodlines that had mingled with uh, with 
lesser uh, the hillmen and in, in, in the dun landings at some point in their history which reduces their age which reduces their height reduces you know changes their looks a little bit makes them they're still doing the dame but they're not so it makes them lesser in the eyes of their you know the the faithful and the high dunedain that survive in arthodane and cardolan so they're kind of like the poor country cousins kind of thing but the fact is that the three major groups here the dunedain the hellman and the dunlandings are ancient foes of each other so we got this this collage or this this it's it's I will not use the term of mixing a mixing bowl because there's no melting pot here. These three distinct uh, cultures remain distinct until they weren't there anymore. And so they were bickering and fighting and feuding among themselves when they weren't fighting somebody from other you know from another area. So it was easy for agents of Agmar of, of the Witch King to come in to subvert them to. Uh, win them over to gain control of them. I mean, it just goes without saying. This was a region of very diverse cultures and angry cultures that were easily exploited by the by the by the enemy. And there's uh, the other two breakaway nations or pocket kingdoms, if you will, of Arthedain and and Cardland. And this this portrays the each conflict sees fewer and fewer Dunedain surviving. Uh, I imagine over the was well, about 800 years, 600 years or so, the Dunedain population diminished and diminished, and diminished until it became uh, in, not nondescript. It just there wasn't enough there for them to matter. At some point, uh, one of the and it's suggested in in Beta Canon. I don't know about. Uh, the main canon, but in 1349, a Hillman lord took took over and allied with the Witch King. So, and then seven years later, launches an attack against Cardolan. So, at some point, the Dunedain leadership failed completely, and Radar and Radar becomes a non-Dunedain kingdom, and and then becomes a vassal state of Angmar. So, we already see the failure at the very beginning, and. It, it's complete at this point. It's no longer pliable to say that Radoor is one of the three successor nations or kingdoms of Arnor because it ceased to exist as a Dunedain state of any form at that point. And then shortly after that, more or less becomes a puppet state in name to Agmar. And it's implied later that before the fall of the Witch King and Agmar. Uh, the depopulation of Red Herb begins. The constant conflicts uh, and the constant animosity amongst the groups sees this continue until uh, after the Witch King uh, is, is subdued and Agmar ceases to exist, Red Herb ceases to exist and it becomes wild, a wilder land, wilderness. At some point in here, uh, it's said that a number of the hobbits prior to moving to the Shrier had come in and settled in the Angle area, mostly stores, until these final conflicts really ramped up and they became uh, aggressively dangerous areas. And some moved further west, closer to Bree. Others went back across the mountains to the Gladden Fields or the area where Gollum comes from. And that's the connection in there. So already as a state, Red right Ors in, in is failed. Then we look at the economy aspects of Rador. When I look at it, it is isolated. The only access of any significance it has is to the east west road. And to a limited degree, uh, the Harwell and the Loudwater allows them to connect further south by riverboat to uh, to Tharbad and to Cardolan and to places further south. There's no access, even remote access to the sea, so there's no sea trade, no sea, no ocean trade. Uh, there's no, aside from Orkish kingdoms and goblin kingdoms in Agmar when it was in existence, uh, the Roharium when they were in the north, maybe, there's really no large concentrations of other populous regions close enough by to encourage a regular trade between them. Any trade that came was from those traveling caravans and, and individuals moving along the east-west east road heading to more populous regions. So there's just no 
demand for large quantities of materials. I think it would be the river, you know, the the other side, the the the, res, the remaining residents of Radar would be more inclined to be a bartering and trading and purchasing those goods that they need that they can't produce themselves as opposed to having viable uh, raw materials or exotic materials or luxury goods or anything that they could trade to these traders for the other going the other direction we also have the only pocket of elves west of the mountains and east of the ocean in Rivendale and at Rivendale is called the last homely house it's also the hidden veil it's hidden for a reason uh, from the very beginning uh, the early leadership of right over it's suggested had approached uh, Elrod and demanded his support and, uh, against uh, Arthedane and Cardolan and uh, Elrod refused for obvious reasons to get involved in the politics let alone the demands of these people so those leader, those same lesser Dunedin leaders more or less decreed that the elves were to be uh, non grata don't involve yourself with them stay away from them don't expect nothing from them they won't be disappointed now as this map suggests there's a couple settlements in here Cameron's Bend along the Horwell the upper Horwell there is the uh, the established canon uh, uh, beta canon capital for Radador it's the largest village and and uh, fortification uh, there's I had other pictures of it with this big weird tower sitting on a twisted hill majority of fortifications actually in the hill the tower itself is significant but not that significant uh, but as you can see cameraman there's no major pathways or roads marked on the map to get to it and the other communities are very remote so once again there's no large concentrations of anybody in right or directly so this establishes that an that an internal econ economy amongst themselves are going to be highly unlikely i mean it's difficult to get through this terrain and and you're not going to move large caravans and there's not large regions of industry or uh, or even raw resources the raw resources that are there are probably very difficult to get to and then you have to contend with trolls coming down out of the Enton Moors and goblin raids and orc raids and and other human uh, tribes and, and and coming into the region and contesting things and there's just no no chance this place is just from the beginning it's it's not going to have a, a good ending and we know that for a fact then we have to include the fact that of the three kingdoms, former kingdoms of Arnor, Radur has is the closest geographically speaking to Agmar. So it's going to have a lot more Agmar's gonna have a lot more influence over Radur from the very beginning than it would have ever have with Arthur Dane Little and Cardolan, because Cardolan's the furthest from Agmar, border wise. So the fact that Radur's already leaning towards a self-destructive, dark, bent, lesser human mindset when it comes to everything. It's just easier prey for Agmar's agents to, to accomplish. So we look at it from a perspective overall. Radawar's doom. It, it was never going to be very well populated. Now had Arnor, it was speculate. If Arnor had not ceased to exist, if I, had Arnor not had its golden age cut short, by the last alliance and continue to slowly progress. In the distant future, Radar right would have a lot more viability if there were no other reason than as a natural retreat for those seeking uh, wilderness and nature sort of endeavors and or raw materials. There's, it's not known what kind of r r minerals or raw ores or any of that stuff can be found in this region. If and I suspect that there's some, there's always some, but the, the, uh, we, uh, it's never established that the dwarves come up here in any significant effort. So uh, if the dwarves don't try, I'm going to suspect that it's a resource mineral poor region or very, very difficult to access. So this still would make it a backwater, even if Arnor was to be a glorious, thriving kingdom like Gondor at height. Right where it would still be a backwater. Its only advantage is as a stopping point along the east-west road for travel. And even then, most of its concentration is, is either north or south. It suggests that the farmlands and, and agri viable agriculture was closer to the angle, which is in the south, where the two rivers come together at the fork, where its its leadership and, and its 
supposed capital are much further north. So they're already huge, rocky, difficult terrain in between just getting back and forth. Um, as an interesting side note, it's implied, it's suggested, and I don't terribly disagree with it, but I, don't, I also don't agree with it, that the angle after the fall of uh, Fornos, after the Witch King is defeated and Agnor ceases to exist, as the rest of, as well as Arthedain for that matter, the descendants of the high men, the, the Anorian Dunedain, who don't leave the, uh, the region, or Arnor altogether, settle in the angle. So the descendants and thri of, of Aragon and his family and his bloodline and those of the rangers who continue to uh, eke out an existence. It's suggested that they settled in the Angle and created a number of villages. There's no evidence of it in game, or outside of game, or outside of beta canon in actual canon or Tolkien's works that I'm aware of. I'm not saying that they don't exist because I'm not by any means an expert on any of this stuff. I have a deep interest in it, but I can't say I know that 100% of 100%. I still believe that a lot of the, the areas that would be more, more sustainable and friendly to a viable population of Dunedain remaining in the north was up around Eden, like Everdom, Eden or however it's pronounced, north of the Shire uh, for a number of reasons. Isolation being the key uh, to their survival. And in the previous videos I've suggested that they, based off of what we know today for a viable population, genetically speaking, they need to be between 500 and 4, 500 and 5,000. Closer to 5,000 is more appropriate in my mind. And the angle is just not large enough to sustain, let alone contain a population of that level without drawing notice. There's just too many people that pass through the east-west road region to the north of the angle. There's too much possible chances for people traveling to the Shire from along the Greenway or in the regions in between of encountering these settlements and allowing the greater world to know about them. So I don't think they did. There might be might be some lingering hobbit communities in the region, but I think most of it's abandoned in the in the centuries after the fall of Angmar and the the defeat of Arthedain. I think that this area is depleted. The Dun Landings move further south to rejoin the other clans closer to the Gap of Isen, as well as I think the the Hillmen would either become even more reclusive uh, or would move to to less hostile areas because it's implied by Gandalf that whole area is up in here, the Entmores and 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 uh, uh, oh. The Ettendales, a couple other locations, it's just between the troll, wandering trolls and orcs and goblins, it's just not conducive to human settlement. And once again, Rivendell becomes even more isolated because of that same reason. So, just saying, right, this is my take on why Radur as a kingdom was a failed kingdom from the beginning and it was doomed. Radur's doomed, or what else do I have here? It's something else. A doomed kingdom, right? So my notes here, he's real following with the hills. I'm gonna start pursuit bitter feud with Carlin over at Almasol for control. So they were always bickering and fighting and always taking the back end. Uh, they just couldn't feel the, the significant armies that the other two uh, pocket kingdoms could, could, right? Yeah, that pretty much covers everything I got in my notes and stuff. So I think. It's an interesting territory. It's an interesting area in its history. It's a very deep history. It's ancient. There, there's elements of the petty dwarves here. There's evidence of other dwarven settlements, tiny, small, increment ones, probably probing to see if there was any resources that were, you know, worth having, uh, or were employed by those with uh, deep, uh, looking to, you know build up the infrastructure and stuff of that nature here, as is suggested in the beta cam gaming material. Uh, as a region, it astrides, it sits astride the east-west road between two very large rivers, and the only, with, which is evidenced by the only bridge east of uh, Buckland. So, 
somebody had to keep this bridge maintained to something. And I think it's the a combination of different groups over time, but it was very well built from the beginning, and that makes me think of uh, New Marine construction. Uh, the area is a population base once again you know for banditry maybe you don't have enough traffic across the east-west road on a regular basis to sustain that sort of stuff this is why if you see bandits or any kind of the thuggery and things going on it's going to be closer to Bree because at least Bree has a human population and it can support it this lends my to my theory that uh, Aragon's descendants did not settle the angle that they were more concentrated to the north of of the Shire because they gained support from the Shire by you know, indirectly, and their isolation in a region known to be uh, free of orcs and goblins and other things of, of terrible dispute makes it more likely for success as opposed to dealing with the co constant uh, problems coming out of the western Misty Mountain Vales and coming down from the south. I not to say that we don't see, wouldn't see any significant uh, activities of the Dunedain Rangers in the region, specifically a more, more the closer to Amundsen, of course, since that was a base, uh, a eastern base of operations for them. But along the east-west road, keeping the east-west road functioning and open f and f fairly safe. I don't think the Rangers would would venture too far north of the of the or south of the. Uh, of the road because there's no real reason to, uh, except for you know, traveling to and from uh, 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 Rivendale, going further north than that or northwest into the into the really remote areas of Red Ore. It's just, you know, I don't see it being viable or justified. It's not saying that some of them didn't. Um, you know, maybe they did. Maybe there were some settlements still tucked up in these human these vales. But it was suggested that the Hillman uh, the Hillman specifically, but the Dunlandings as well, were established in significant numbers to be a problem. And if there was any kind of viable population of, of Dunedain, especially pure Dunedain left, they would still be in a problem because these Hillmen would raid them or attack them. And so would the Dunlandings. Now, it's suggested that the Hillmen moved on, the Dunlandings moved on, or, or they faded out of the region, and we can argue that they did. I mean, like I said, it's a very inhospitable region, if you, unless you're really truly wanting to hide from the world. But uh, you got to deal with all the the nastiness that goes with that. The trolls specifically, but other fell creatures that probably roam the regions occasionally, as opposed to everything and anything. I've, what little there is of read of Western Arnor, North North Western Arnor, as opposed to Northeast Arnor, uh, being much more suitable and benign region and more and significantly isolated for uh, a viable Dunedain population in Arnor. Maybe maybe there's a little bit of both. Maybe there were a settlement or two in in the angle or tucked away in the hills of Red Ore because of the proximity of Rivendell or the, the East West Road or just because that's just the way the Dunedain wanted to operate that they wanted to spread out to increase their chances of, of survival and success. So, there you have it, my talk on the Doom of Radur. I will be doing, uh, in the near future, a video installments for both Caradolin and Arthodane in that aspect, which will then conclude uh, this area of Middle-earth, pretty much. Because I think I've, I've done some, you know, I, I don't know if I did, a, I might do a video for Agmar and a video for Rivendale, but there's not much more else up here to do other than those in my personal opinion. Anyway, till next time, this is Rick, and this is your seat at the table.